everyone. This is Nurse Anna coming to you from NurseStudy.net. And today we're going to be reviewing gastrointestinal bleed or GI bleeds. This website is not intended to provide medical advice. The articles on this website are intended for entertainment or educational value only. While we strive to offer 100% accuracy, medical procedures are rapidly changing and laws vary greatly from location. GI bleeding is a condition that involves bleeding in one or many parts of the digestive tract. It is not a disorder in itself, rather it's a symptom of many GI disorders, including peptic ulcer disease, inflammatory bowel disease, or even gastric cancer. GI bleeding is usually suspected when there is blood in the stool. It could be mild, moderate, or severe, and it could be fatal. For the signs and symptoms of a GI bleed, we would be looking for visible blood in the stool or dark tarry colored stools, rectal bleeding, hematemesis or vomiting of blood, fainting, lightheadedness, fatigue, abdominal pain, and even chest pain. Now we're going to look at causes for upper GI bleeding. This could be peptic ulcers on the stomach lining and small intestines. They are the most common reasons behind upper GI bleeding. Enlarged veins in the esophagus known as esophageal varices as well as esophagitis can also show symptoms of bleeding through hematemesis or black tarry stools. Now we're going to look at some causes of lower GI bleeding. One could be diverticulitis, which is the formation, inflammation, and infection of small bulging pouches in the GI tract, which can result in GI bleeding. Ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease can also lead to GI bleeding as they can cause inflammation of colon, rectum, and GI lining. Benign or cancerous tumors can cause weakening of the digestive tract, which may lead to a GI bleed. Hemorrhoids, anal fissures, and colon polyp formation can also cause bleeding. Now let's move on to some complications. Anemia and hypovolemia. Severe and or chronic GI bleeding can lead to the loss of blood volume. This is called hypovolemia. And red blood cells, which contain hemoglobin and iron, that would be anemia. If left untreated, anemia and hypovolemia can be fatal. Shock would be another complication. Did you know that losing more than 20% of blood volume due to severe GI bleeding can lead to hypovolemic shock? This can lead to significant or organ failure, which includes the brain, liver, and kidneys, as well as gangrene of the limbs due to lack of blood supply. Now we're going to look at how diagnosis of a GI bleeding is. First would be a stool test, and that's an inspection of the stool, and we're looking for black tarry appearance. Analysis of the sample for fecal occult blood test to determine any GI bleeding. Blood test. This would include a complete blood count we also call it a CBC, may reveal a low H&H or hemoglobin hematocrit count. Iron studies may show low iron levels. Biochemistry may show poor liver function or kidney function. Nasogastric lavage, which is the insertion of an NG tube from the nose to the stomach in order to aspirate stomach contents and analyze them. Imaging studies, an abdominal CT scan can be used to visualize the abdomen. An endoscopy, colonoscopy, or flexible sigmoidoscopy insertion of a, which is insertion of a long tube with a small camera on its end in order to visualize the GI tract. Capsule endoscopy, which is swallowing a small capsule containing a camera that takes pictures while it travels down the GI tract. A balloon assisted enteroscopy, which is used to visualize parts of the small intestines that the doctor cannot view using endoscopy. And an angiography, which is insertion of a contrast into an artery and taking an x-ray to look and treat for bleeding blood vessels. Now we're going to discuss treatments. The treatment during a GI diagnostic procedure, the physician may be able to remove the polyps that cause GI bleeding as he or she performs a colonoscopy. The doctor can also treat bleeding peptic ulcers while the patient undergoes an endoscopy. Now let's discuss medications. Upper GI bleeding can benefit from PPI medications because they reduce the product of stomach acid. Antacids that do not contain aspirin are helpful in neutralizing stomach acid. And H2 receptor blockers reduce the production of stomach acid. IV fluids and blood transfusions. 
Severe or prolonged GI bleeding may cause anemia and hypovolemia. This would require intravenous fluid therapy and may also need blood transfusions to replace the lost blood volume and red blood cells. Now let's go into a sample care plan for a GI bleed. Our nursing diagnosis would be fluid volume deficit related to blood volume loss secondary to GI bleeding as evidenced by hematemesis, skin pallor, blood pressure of 85 over 58, and lightheadedness. For our desired outcome, the patient will have an absence of GI bleeding, a hemoglobin level of over 13, blood pressure within normal range, alert and orientated, and normal skin color. Intervention. Assess vital signs, particularly blood pressure level. Rationale. Hypovolemia due to GI bleeding may lower blood pressure and put patient at risk for hypotensive episodes that can lead to shock. Intervention. Start a fluid balance chart. Monitor the intake and output of the patient. Include episodes of vomiting, gastric suctioning, and other gastric losses in the INO charting. Rationale to monitor the patient's fluid volume accurately. Intervention. Start intravenous therapy as prescribed. Electrolytes may need to be replaced intravenously. Encourage oral fluid intake of at least 2,000 ml per day if not contraindicated. Rationale, to replace the fluid and electrolyte loss from vomiting and other gastric losses and to promote better blood circulation around the body. Intervention, educate the patient or guardian on how to fill out a fluid balance chart. Rationale, to help the patient or the guardian take ownership of the patient's care, encouraging them to drink more fluids as needed or report any changes to the nursing team. Intervention. Administer blood transfusion as prescribed. Rationale, to increase the hemoglobin level and treat anemia and hypovolemia related to GI bleeding. This concludes our lecture today on GI bleeding. This is Nurse Anna at nursestudy.net. Please feel free to visit us for free care plans, practice exams, and study guides, all at nursestudy.net. Have a great day.